Hello, welcome back to Algebra 1. Here in this lesson we're going to talk about the very important topic of what we call exponents in algebra. And so, so far all of the equations that we've solved and all of the uh, expressions that we've simplified, they really haven't involved any exponents. So now we're going to, you know, investigate what an exponent is. And over the next few lessons we will start to solve lots and lots of problems and you'll start seeing exponents all the time in algebra. The main thing for you to realize is that an exponent is just a short way to write down multiplication in algebra. It just makes it easier to write everything down. So for instance, if you have 6 times 6, so this is a special case. You're doing multiplication of two numbers, 6 times 6, but the numbers that you're multiplying together are the same number. So 6 is multiplied by itself two times. So the way that you write that down as an exponent is the number 6 raised to the power of 2. So what it means is the, the, the bottom number or the bigger number is what you're multiplying and the top number what we call the exponent, this little 2 is what we call the exponent, that is how many times the number 6 is multiplied by itself. All right, So it's a shortcut way instead of writing 6 times 6 you can just write it like this. Now it makes a little more sense when you start seeing longer things like for instance 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 and you have it four times. How would you write that as an exponent? Well, the number 6 is what we're multiplying, and we're multiplying it by itself four times. So we write that as 6 to the fourth power, just like this. So it's always going to be much faster to write 6 to the fourth power than it is to write 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. And that's why we use exponents. It's basically just a shortcut way to write down uh, multiplication. That's all it is. All right, so just take a few more examples. We'll get some more practice. What if you had 7 times 7 times 7? How would you write that as an exponent? Well, the number we're multiplying is 7, and we're doing it 3 times. So the exponent is to the power of 3, 7 to the power of 3. That's the final answer. Now, so far we've been talking about numbers. You know, that's all of the examples that we've been giving. But exponents apply to anything, including variables. So, for instance, if you have the variable x and you multiply it by itself, x can be multiplied by itself, it's just a number, we don't know what it is, it's unknown, so we write it as x, but it can be multiplied by itself. Let's do that a few times, x times x times x. So here we have the variable x multiplied by itself how many times? Five times. You just count them up, one, two, three, four, five, so the power is, or the exponent is x to the power of five, the exponent is five in that case. All right. What if you had the variable y multiplied by y multiplied again by y? Well, again, what we're multiplying is y, and we're doing it three times, so the exponent is three. It's very simple. Now, what if you had something like, we'll go over here, what if you had something like four times x times x? So how would you write that as an exponent? Well, the number four is multiplied by everything, but it's only there one time, so the number four here is not going to participate in the exponent. But x is multiplied by itself two times, so we can shorten that as an exponent. So the way you write it is 4 times x squared. That is how you, you write that down. And that's you're going to see things like this pretty much from here on out in algebra. 4x squared just means the number 4, this one, times x times x. That's what the x squared means. Okay? What if you had negative 6 times z times z times z. Again, the negative 6 is only present one time, so it doesn't really participate or it can't be really be written as an exponent, but the z's are there three times, so the way you would write this is negative 6 times z to the power of 3, and this tells you it's negative 6 times z times z times z. That's what that means, and that's how we write it as an exponent. All right, just a couple more. What if we have y times y times negative 5? Okay, so in this case we have y squared from here. This is y times y is y squared. Now the negative 5 is also being multiplied, so you could write it as y squared times negative 5. You want to put parentheses here, you see, because if you don't put the if you take the parentheses away, it looks like y squared minus 5, which is definitely not what it is. It's y squared multiplied by negative 5. So you could write it like this, but in algebra we always write the numbers first even if they're negative, and the exponents second. You always see it written as you know 3x squared or negative 5y squared or 10 
you know, z cubed or something like that, you, you never leave it like this, where the number is last. You always write the number first, so that's why I'm rewriting it. All right, our last problem in this quick little section, what if you have 7 times x times negative 2 times x? How would you write this as an exponent? Um, well, what you have here, notice everything's multiplied together. The 7 times the x is also multiplied by negative 2 is also multiplied by x. So the x's are multiplied together. We can write that as x squared, and the numbers are multiplied together. So we can obviously multiply the numbers. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14, all right? And x times x is written as, now you know, x squared. So you write it like this. And the number is always written in front of whatever the variable has as its exponent. So this was just a really quick little introduction to what is an exponent and how do we write exponents down. And as we go through the next several sections, we'll be talking about exponents a lot. So get comfortable with this idea of, of, of writing down multiplication as an exponent. Make sure you understand this. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue learning about exponents and algebra.